What up YouTube, TK here, and today we are dealing with this. This is an Apple laptop charger with a MagSafe connector. Is this MagSafe 1 or MagSafe 2? Well, I don't know. You probably do. Um, the problem with this is, actually, it appears that the cable inside is somewhat damaged because this will only charge the laptop in certain orientations. Now, I started cutting this open thinking it would be a routine repair and I wasn't going to film it at all, and then I found this weird two-layer shielded design and I thought it may be worth investigating. So what I've done is I've unwound and clipped off one layer of shield and obviously the rubber outside and if we twist it more we can see there's another layer of shield surrounding the white plastic core which presumably contains all the wires we're interested in. So let's keep cutting and stripping and hope we can actually repair this. Let's get cutting. I have no idea why they do this twin shielded design Note that the shields were actually wound in opposite orientations, which is why I cut them separately. I imagine the design is due to some kind of noise restriction in terms of noise output by the power supply. It could also be to protect the data signals that are sent along this cable. I think there's some sort of communication between the laptop and charger to make sure things charge at the correct rates and it has something to do with this colored LED. But all that I can't really remember, so we'll just keep stripping down and actually see what's inside this thing. I have no idea even how many conductors are in here, but sometimes that makes it more fun. So at this point I realized I probably should have Googled how to fix a MagSafe charger, but you know, too easy. So what is strange is there just appears to be two layers of shield on the outside and then one conductor on the inside. And what's more, I can't seem to find any evidence of any damage that would have caused the charger to stop working or get hot like it was. The problem this thing was having was you had to basically sit the cable in a very precise orientation to actually get it to charge and even when it did charge it would get insanely hot. So I sort of assume maybe a intermittent short or broken wire but so far I'm not finding any evidence of that so after stripping all this back we're just going to cut it off there and keep looking at the connector end or the gland end as some would say and see what we can find. Right, let us see what can be done. Um, okay. That's probably not positive. In fact, I think that's possibly the end of our repair right there because I can see no way to actually get in here. And that's gone ahead and... Ah! So maybe this is the problem. We can see this little clamp here and the shielding wires all come away. And then we have this inside conductor. So I reckon there's actually sort of two main conductors, the main power and then the shield is the ground or vice versa. And what's happened is with all the flexing over time, the shield has stopped making good contact with whatever it's supposed to contact in here. And that's why it no longer works. So I guess the next thing to do is to just see if we can cut this open and get inside and take a closer look. And that's really about all we can do, but let's see how we go. Now, one problem in actually taking this apart is I don't have a Dremel, which would be pretty much the perfect tool for this task. So instead we're going to rely on the fact that it's made out of fairly soft metal and we're just going to chew away at it with these side cutters. Not really the ideal way to do it, but needs must. So if we take a look in here, we can see around the outside you've got some of that shield still there. And then in the middle here on this middle line, you've got a bit of a gap in the insulation where you've got this crimped on connection. And I just wonder if that's causing our problems. So we're going to keep chewing away at this and see what we turn up. All right, going at this with the side cutters has only got us so far. It's time to break out the bigger guns. So after attacking this with the angle grinder and a pair of side cutters, I was able to peel this open and I think I figured it out. What I think happened is if we look closely, we have these two contacts here. Now, one of them was connected to this center wire and the other was connected to the shield, which would have gone here. So what I think has happened is after years of use and abuse, all the flexing has led to A, the shielding strands actually breaking and not making good contact anymore and B leading to this insulation pulling back just a little bit which would pretty much account for the poor performance of this adapter because remember we had two symptoms we had A intermittent connection and B when it was connecting it was hot that's indicative of very high resistance somewhere I've seen it happen to other laptops when the connectors only half plugged in 
the connector gets incredibly hot and you smell burning plastic because the high resistance is causing a lot of heating. I think it's the same thing here. I think this uh, connection to the shield was getting incredibly high resistance and thus causing our problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and fix this. We're going to solder this back to the connector and we're going to insulate it all with a bunch of epoxy which will be a nice reliable way to protect it. However, before we do actually solder this back together, we're just going to verify which pins are which using a pin out online and a multimeter to back probe. So let's do that. So basically left to right, the pins on the MagSafe connector are ground V plus charge control pin V plus ground. And that's why you can plug in a MagSafe connector either way. It's a pretty neat design. So we're gonna try and determine which of these pins is V plus and which one is ground. Not that it really matters. Uh, and I've already done a continuity check. So we can see that indeed that our two outer pins are ground. Also that our two inner pins are V plus or well, we can tell that they're connected together anyway. We can also check just for safety that ground and V plus are not connected together and they aren't. So that's good. So if we hit this middle strand, we can see that's connected to V plus. And then if we hit this outer spade, we can see that's connected to ground along with the big, oh, well the magnet's not connected to anything, but that's fine. So we've determined that this is V plus, that's ground. We think we know why it didn't work. And we also think that if we just resold these connections and insulate everything properly, we'll have a bloody good time. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lop off this connection here for V plus and then solder our lead right back on here. We'll solder the shield onto the shield connection and then insulate the crap out of everything and hope it works. Should be good. What is interesting is that this V plus wire is actually uh, what appears to be Teflon coated for the insulation. I can't 100% confirm that, but it, it feels very similar to what I actually used on the exhaust system on the MX-5. Very interesting that they would actually use that here. One would imagine it's for heat resistance, but you know. Incidentally, even though this is the DC side of the charger, you really shouldn't be playing with this stuff if you're not fairly confident in your abilities and you know the theory behind how it all works. Incidentally, if you really peel and peel, you can actually completely get the case off this thing, which is pretty cool. Makes it a lot more easy to work on. So now that that's gone, we can go ahead and solder freely to this thing. That's made my life much easier. Let us start with V+, plus, probably around 18, 19 volts or so. Not the easiest solder job, but not the hardest by a long shot. And there's a rubbish version of a solder joint. Let's try and get a better one. Trick is, if you do soldering regularly, get a set of helping hands. I've never owned any, and my life has always been hard. I don't know why I don't just buy some. Okay, so that joint isn't actually too bad. I did really struggle getting onto it. What you should do in a situation like this is use some helping hands, because when stuff is sliding around like this, especially when you're working with small little mechanisms that involve plastic parts, you end up getting things too hot or missing your target, and you'll actually destroy what you're working on when that's something like a MagSafe connector, which you can't readily replace, you know, you don't want to make these mistakes. So definitely get some helping hands. I'm going to keep limping along though and get this finished. So we'll get in here and tin that. Ow. And then we'll try and pin that down where we want it to go. Burn myself a little, but that is a successful joint. Let's take a look at that up close and then see about insulating it. Both of those sides are very well attached. We do want to add some strain relief and protect it all with some epoxy, but first, there is a very important step. We are going to plug this into the wall and make sure the correct voltages are on the correct pins. Now, there is some charge control circuitry in here, which I think may interfere with our readings just a touch, but we'll start by checking the pins before all that, because there are only two lines coming up from the main body of the charger. So if we check here, what do we got? Anything? Nothing. We had something before. What do we got? Almost nothing. 0.57 volts. A bit strange. So if we check these pins here, which are coming straight off the charger down below, we're only seeing half a volt. Now that is a bit strange. I wonder if it's something to do with this charge control circuitry. 
but it is a bit confusing because there's only two lines coming up from the brick that's plugged into the main so I'm not sure how that would work let's check the actual pins so we'll check one of the grounds and one of the V plus pins and try not to touch the bloody magnet easier said than done Again, half a volt, not much, but we are seeing something and we're seeing it in the correct polarity. Oh, we saw seven volts for a second there. I have a feeling everything's gonna be okay. I think we've got this done the right way. So what we're gonna do is seal this up a little bit and plug it into the laptop and then if that's all good, we'll seal it up with some epoxy for real. Let's go. Okay, here stands our beleaguered MacBook with a battery that is very much on 0%. We have our charger plugged in and we will very carefully insert our hackily repaired one. And I'm hoping I've done a good enough job on this to make it work. Green. Very good. That looks like it's working. Straight away, orange, that means it's charging. No problem. If we give the cable a little wiggle, doesn't fail. I think we may have actually fixed it. I can't believe that. The computer is powering up. Okay, so I've left things on for an hour now and we can see that this thing is charging successfully, which is absolutely beautiful. So all we have to do now is encase it in a bit of epoxy and we're good. So we obviously want to protect the charger cable and insulate it so that nothing bad happens. And a great way to do that is with epoxy. However, we can't just pour a bunch of epoxy on this and expect it to work. It can often be very liquid. So we kind of want some kind of frame or shell that we can use to add a bit of structure and the friendly pistachio nut is going to provide us with just that plus they're delicious excellent salty little buggers so I reckon with a little cutout that'll sit in there real nicely and then we can just wrap a bit of tape around this back end here and we'll be all good Fantastic, that is gonna do very nicely indeed. All right, what comes before part B? Part A. I really didn't say that with anywhere near the requisite enthusiasm. All right, we got a fat log of epoxy here. This is gonna be great. All the best repairs involve pistachio nuts. I can absolutely guarantee you that. So now we wanna be very careful not to get it all over the magnet like I just have because that actually needs to be clear space to allow it to slot into the laptop's port. If we get a little on there, it's not too bad. We can always dig it out later, but really I am making rather a hash of this so far. Um, yeah, that's, that's not gone well at all. What I should have done is tacked this in place with super glue first, but I thought I'd try and show off and go straight to epoxy. Also, don't get any epoxy at all on the pins, because once you get it in there, game over, mate. Absolutely game over. So we're just going to hold that while we wait for the epoxy to set for a little while, and then we should be fairly okay. Alright, so we've left things overnight to dry because I accidentally bought 24-hour epoxy instead of the 5-minute stuff, but it's looking pretty good. we got a little air bubble here. We'll just clean things up with a file, and then go ahead and plug it in and see if it all works. Just remember that it really is key that you didn't get any epoxy on the pins themselves because they're little spring devices and if you got epoxy on those, well you're pretty much screwed. We're okay, we just got to take down this air bubble and yeah that's that's looking pretty okay now so that's going to be good. We'll just scrape along the top here, make sure we don't have any epoxy on the magnet face itself but that also looks good. So we should now be able to plug it in. Alright, so now that we've got it all glued up, let's plug it in, give it a go. And it appears to work. And what's cool is not only does this work and protect the butchered MagSafe connector from damage, it also looks like there's a glowing pistachio sitting in your charge jack. And, you know, you just can't buy that kind of creativity. So overall, I'm considering this pretty damn successful. We're able to rip the MagSafe connector apart. We're able to figure out how it worked. And most of all, we're able to fix it using our friend, the pistachio nut. So all in all, good night hacking. And until next time, TK out.